Hi, I'm Bob Flisser, and I want to show you one of my favorite tools in Adobe Illustrator, and that is the Shape Builder tool. The Shape Builder tool was first introduced in the CS5 version, and I did a video on it when that came out, but the tool has been enhanced a little bit. Now I'm recording this on the Mac, and the Shape Builder tool will work the same way in Windows, and right now I'm using the CC 2015 version of Illustrator. The Shape Builder tool does what the Pathfinder panel does, but it's more interactive, right? So if you go to the Window menu, you can still bring up the Pathfinder panel, and it'll do all this great stuff, but the Shape Builder tool will do all of that interactively. So you see what I have here on the screen. I have a bunch of shapes overlapping. These circles all have different fills. They have different strokes. If you want to use the same exact file that I have open, See, it's called Shape Builder Exercise. You can download it from my website at the URL you see here on your screen. The most important thing to remember is the Shape Builder tool will only act on shapes that are selected. So if I go and get the Shape Builder tool, you see it's right here, and the shortcut is Shift M, and that's the same shortcut on both Mac and Windows. Nothing happens. You see, I've got the little slash on the arrow pointer, and I can't really click on anything. So let's go and get the regular selection tool back. Before I begin here, you notice that the colors are white fill and black stroke. That's just Illustrator's default. But as soon as I select objects, that's going to start changing. So I'm just going to select these two. I'll do a marquee selection on these two objects here in the upper right corner. And because I have two different objects selected, then Illustrator gives me the question mark because I've got a mixture. So let's go and get the Shape Builder tool again. And you notice that because the object with the yellow fill is kind of first. It shows me that's yellow fill. Black stroke, I really don't know where that came from. I guess it's still keeping the default of black stroke, even though we have uh, blue and red. Why is it changing the fill and not the stroke? Who knows? But that's not really important. So let's do this. Let's take the Shape Builder tool, and we're going to drag in a couple of different directions. First, put your mouse pointer in one shape. I'll put this in the uh, yellow shape, and just drag down to the other shape, and when you let go, look what happens. They combine, and they keep the fill and the stroke of that yellow shape, that first shape. Let's undo. I'll press Command-Z. On Windows, you can press Control-Z. That will undo in every program under the sun. Now let's go in the opposite direction. I'll put the mouse pointer on the green one. By the way, notice that whichever shape you put the mouse pointer on, it gets kind of shaded a little bit, so that's also helpful so you know really where the mouse pointer is, what you're doing here. And now I will drag in the opposite direction, and now you notice it keeps the same yellow fill, but it's the stroke that's different. Right before we had the blue stroke kept from the first shape, now we have the red stroke from the second shape. Again, there doesn't really seem to be a rhyme or reason. Uh, this is just what's programmed uh, into the software. So let's undo again. Now, what about this overlapping shape? Put your mouse pointer in this overlapping shape, and now drag from there, let's say, into the green one. And notice what happens. Let me undo. We'll do from the overlapping shape into the yellow one. Again, some, some the same, some different. Let's undo. Now, what if we want to target just that overlapping shape by itself? If you put your mouse pointer on that shape and just click. That's a single click. Again, we see a little bit of a change, but here's what's really going on. Let's get the selection tool back. I'll just click on the background to deselect everything. Now click on that overlapping shape, or I should say overlapping area, and it becomes a shape, and now we can drag that out. So that has created a new shape, and over here is nothing. See, when I click it, Everything gets deselected, so that's how you know there's actually a gap. There's a hole, and you could put maybe a, a picture or a color behind that. And let's undo a few times so we get back to normal. This time, with the Shape Builder tool, I'll press Shift-M. When you put your mouse pointer over that overlapping shape, hold down on the Mac, hold down the Option key. In Windows, hold down the Alt key. And notice there's a little minus sign on the mouse pointer. Now click, and you get a hole. Notice what's happening with the... Uh, stroke. The stroke is a little different, but that, again, is a deletion. We don't have a new shape created. If I get the selection tool and I click in here, you see everything is deselected because it simply removed that area. 
Again, let's undo. I'll go and get the shape builder tool back. And we can also use this to get kind of cookie cutter shapes. Put the mouse pointer on that overlapping area. And again, hold down the option key or the alt key and now drag into that circle. And you see, you get a cookie cutter, undo and start from that overlapping shape again with the option or alt key and drag into the other circle. And again, you have a cookie cutter shape kind of similar to that. Let's undo. So we could do that in both ways. What you probably don't want to do is if you hold down the alt or option key in one circle and then drag across the overlap into the other one, you're just going to end up deleting both shapes altogether. So I'll undo that. Now, what if you want to combine more than just two shapes? Or what if you want to combine shapes that aren't right next to each other? Well, first thing we want to do is select. So let's go and select all of the shapes. So I'll get the selection tool. Let me just click on the background so I deselect everything. And I can do a marquee selection of all of the shapes, or I can press Command A on the Mac or Control A in Windows to select all of the shapes. Now, and here's what's a little enhancement since the tool was first introduced. When I get the Shape Builder tool, I can do sort of like a lasso, like you're familiar here with the lasso tool in Illustrator or in Photoshop. And I can do something like this. I'll start dragging on this shape and into this shape. And it's combined those two shapes that are not contiguous. I'll undo and I can do maybe a bunch of shapes, several shapes like that. And again, undo. What if I want to combine all of the shapes? Again, let's go back to the selection tool. And if you need to, Command A or Control A to select all of them. Now with the Shape Builder tool, let's put the mouse pointer up here, let's say above and to the left, hold down the Shift key. And now you can drag a rectangle on all of them. And now they are all combined into one big giant shape. And by the way, this is really happening behind the scenes. If you go to the view menu and choose outline or press the shortcut, you can see you've actually made a destructive change. Press Command Y to get back. So that is the Shape Builder tool in Adobe Illustrator, first introduced in the CS5 version and now updated a little bit in the Creative Cloud 2015 version.